You know, I think we played very physical, you know. I think we ended up with two, 200 something yards. I can't remember the exact number, but I think we came out and played very physical. And, you know, they were bigger up front, so we had to, you know, it was a tougher game for us to move them off the line and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it always fires us up. Um, you know, when our running backs are running through people like that, you know, especially for Kenny, you know, last week, I remember last week, they asked me about uh, Kendall and Dejan running through people. And I was like, nah, and you gotta uh, think about Kenny too. He'll run through somebody too. And then for him to come out and just do that over and over again, you know, it hypes us up. Warren, how important is it to uh, control the offensive line this game versus Tennessee with such a potent offense on the other side of the ball? You know, you know, having an efficient run game, you know, not putting our defense back out there, you know, not having three and outs, you know, that's always the goal, you know, even with whatever team we're playing. So just having an efficient run game, you know, be able to control the line of scrimmage and stuff like that. Warren, Tennessee has been really good on defense as far as stopping the run. Just what does that challenge present going up against that defensive line this week? Well, you know, it's always a challenge. You know, like any team we play in the SEC, it's always a challenge. You know, the defensive line is always pretty good. And, you know, just going into this week, you know, watching film and seeing what they do to their tendencies and stuff like that and figuring out the best way to attack them. Another Tennessee offensive question, as far as the tempo that they work with, they run with, how different is that, unique is that to what y'all seen so far this year? Or has that just been first played against since you have joined? Oh, yeah, you know, you know, for me personally, you know, we don't go against that type right, of right, right. speed, but just seeing it in person, they move pretty fast, and, you know, I, think, I don't know the exact number, but they're, you know, they're getting a playoff in almost every 10 seconds, so that type of speed, you know, conditioning this week is going to be a big part for us, you know, making sure everybody's, you know, ready to go and conditioned. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, especially in the beginning of the season, we weren't, you know, um, protecting them as well as we needed to, and now we had to, you know, go back and look at ourselves and say that, you know, that's not the offensive line that we want to be, and we have to protect them, you know, in order for our offense to, you know, head in the right direction. So we've been taking a lot of pride in that, and then working on it in practice and training. Well, I know it's just an, another game on the schedule, but it is number one versus number two in Athens. It's going to be an incredible crowd. I mean, have you thought about what this environment's going to be like this weekend? Oh, it's going to be crazy, you know. I'm thinking back to, you know, the Arkansas game last year, the Kentucky game, or maybe even back to my freshman year, the Notre Dame game, how the crowd was. You know. And I'm expecting, you know, the fans to be full playing, you know. It's going to be a fun game. I'm looking forward to it. Like we tweeted out yesterday, if you can't talk by the time you leave, you have to yell enough. How did the fans impact the game outcome overall? Oh, yeah, you know, especially when the offense, when their offense is out there, for them to communicate, you know, if the fans are going crazy, it's hard to, you know, hear. You know, sometimes you'll be sitting there, you can't hear the guy next to you talking. So the fans definitely play a huge part in that. Those games that you mentioned, uh, Arkansas against Kentucky and Notre Dame, when you're like uh, you know, at your team hotel, going through your normal feeding uh, routine, or just like, when do you notice a difference that like something crazy is going on outside or that people are really worried about the business? You know, probably when we go to pregame meal, because we have a huge glass wall over there at the Georgia Center right there where, our, uh, where we have pregame meal. So you see everybody tailgating and stuff like that. And, you know, especially when we walk through the buses to get on to go to the stadium, that's when we really see it. Question for Warren. Mm -hmm. Warren, this uh, this rivalry. Well, I guess it will be a rivalry now because it's been so one-sided. Um, recent years, Tennessee hasn't been what Tennessee has been. I'm telling people that the SEC is better and the East is better when Tennessee is good. Talk a little bit about that between these two teams and the fact that so much is on the line and the fact that it makes a big premium on beating Tennessee. Oh yeah, you know. You know, in the East, we always want to go undefeated. You know, we want we want to be um, dominant when it comes to the East. And you know, Tennessee's they're doing really well this year, and so it's going to be a good game. And can you repeat your question? I'm sorry, I got lost. There. 
So just just the fact that it's got a big spotlight on this game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the next game. You know, we're gonna take it. You know, like this, like it's the next game. They're a good team. You know, we're gonna practice and go and watch film and see what we can do and come out. You know, on top. Yeah, you know, in practice we we've done the fumble recovery drill, but it's it's different in the game. You know, things are happening way faster. And, you know, I thought I had it, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, he plays on the defensive side of the ball, but what have you seen out of Javon Davis Johnson this year, especially as he's become a more vocal leader for this defense? Oh, yeah, he's definitely stepped up, you know, huge for our defense. You know, he's becoming more of a vocal leader, you know, he's leading by example, and then he's demanding, you know, excellence from, you know, all the defenders and just the offense, too. You know, at practice, he's pushing us when we do like team run and stuff like that. You know, he's coming in 110%. <clears throat> Going back to Saturday's game, obviously two uncharacteristic turnovers early in that th- third quarter got him back in the game. What was the talk on the sideline and in the huddle just to bounce back and score the next drive? You know, just staying focused, you know, staying composed. You know, things didn't go our way, the back-to-back turnovers. And so, you know, just staying composed and, you know, keeping our heads straight and getting back to work. Uh, again, back to Saturday. What's it like going, against, going up against the former teammate in Brandon Cox? You know, it's always good to see Brandon, you know, even though he chose to leave here and go to Florida. But, you know, he's a good player, and it was it was fun going against him. Yeah. Any more for Warren? All right, thank you. Mm-hmm.